Hi, welcome to my video on recursive sequences. Now, a recursive sequence is where the next member of a particular sequence depends on the value of the previous term. So, uh, it turns out that a lot, of, a lot of things we've already covered, arithmetic and geometric series, already fall under that, uh, already fall under that uh, description. An arithmetic sequence, which where any term can be um, gotten by applying a particular formula, or a geometric series, which is similar, you can get any term by applying some formula, also has a recursive version. So, for example, an arithmetic series, re recall that uh, every new term in an arithmetic series just is, an, is really the old term plus some difference added to it. That's really all an arithmetic sequence is. So therefore, this can apply. It's like the nth term is equal to the previous term, and term n minus 1, plus some difference. And that's all you need. But in order to distinguish this from any other sort of sequence, you have to know what the first term is. Otherwise, you can make this into anything you like. For example, um, for example, let's just take uh, let's just take this board, and I'll just make the numbers one, three, five, seven, nine. Really, just the odd numbers. So, um, so I could say that the nth term is equal to the n minus first term sub uh, plus two, right? But if I don't tell you what the first term is, if I don't tell you that the first term is a 1, then I could say, well, let's say that the first term is 0. Will I be able to regenerate the sequence if the first term is 0? Or, you know, if we call that t1? Well, t2 then would equal t1 plus 2 according to this formula. And if I add, if my t1 was 0, then 0 plus 2 is 2. Does that occur in the sequence up here? No, it does not. So you can see that this, this formula does not have enough information. We need to know what t1 is. We need to know what the first term is in order to nail it to a particular arithmetic sequence. And so here, according to this, we say it's 1. Now, with these two pieces of information, we now have an unambiguous definition for what kind of sequence this is or or what, what the exact numbers are in the sequence. Okay, the same is true for, um, the same is true for, um, er, uh, sorry, geometric sequence. So if I have 2, 4, 8, and 16, duh, 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 as you can see, these are all powers of 2. Well, how about if we say now that the nth term is equal to, 2 multiplied by the previous term, which would make sense. Which would seem to make sense, it would seem fine, but except I don't tell you what the first term is. Okay, I don't tell you what the first term is. So, let's say the first term was 3. Let's say that t1 was equal to 3. Would I be able to generate this? Well, let's, let's take a look. t2 equals t1 multiplied by 2, right? Because, you know, if that's t2, we're multiplying the previous term by 2. So that's all I'm doing here. Well, that means 3 times 2, which is 6. Do I get 6 here? No. t3, this will be, well, t2 times 2, which is 6 times 2, which is 12. But that doesn't, that doesn't fall in the sequence at all. So t2 here is supposed to be 4, t3 is supposed to be 8, but instead I'm getting 6 and 12. So as you can see, I need to know the first term. So t, t1, we, we say here that t1 is equal to 2. And that way, we can unambiguously and exactly get this sequence and nothing else. So those are the... Those are the the kinds of recursion that, well, it's not that you already know about, you do know about them, but you knew about them through calling them arithmetic and geometric sequences. Um, 
and through using a different formula. But now these are what we call recursive formulas. They're recursive formulas that generate the same sequences. But of course, there are other kinds of recursion. So we don't need to limit ourselves to arithmetic and geometric. There are some very famous recursive sequences that I would like to discuss with you. And they have some rather bizarre consequences. So, okay. Let's take a look at, let's say that we have the number one. And let's say the first two numbers are the number one. And let's say that the next term in the sequence is gotten by adding the previous two terms together. So one plus one is two. But now I need to make my next term, so I gotta add one plus two because they're the two previous terms. So one plus two is three. Okay, so then I make my next term by adding, once again, the previous two terms. Two plus three is five. Okay, and three plus five is eight. So you get the idea. Um, and next one, five and eight is 13, and eight and 13 is 21. These numbers can get very big, not as, not as quickly as exponential, exponentials of whole numbers, but uh, they do have their way. Now, this is called the Fibonacci sequence. So the Fibonacci sequence is quite a famous sequence. Uh, it's been around for about 300 years. And um, it's been used in things like architecture. Like if you take the ratio of any two numbers sequentially, like 21 over 3 or 13 over 8 or 8 over 5, as you take sequential ratios going in the increasing direction, these numbers get closer and closer to what's called the golden ratio. Now this is not, uh, unlike what most people super, you know, have in terms of superstition, you can actually do anything, uh, you can actually have any sequence that follows the same rules and they will also come to the golden ratio. There's another kind of sequence um, called the Lucas sequence and instead of having one followed by two, you have two followed by one and then you keep going, right? you keep going. So you, you do the same rules as for the Fibonacci sequence, but 2 plus 1 is 3, 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 and 4 is 7. As you can see, the numbers are totally different. 4 and 7 is 11, 7 and 11 is 18, 18 and 11 is 29, and so on. Okay, this is called the Lucas sequence. Following the same rules. And that is that Tn equals t n minus 1 plus t n minus 2. And that's really all it is, right? In fact, both of these sequences, both of these sequences follow that exact formula. But what if I wanted to only, only say, you know, which sequence I want? Okay, well, you need to tell me what the first two things are because this requires two previous terms. So you have to let me know that t1 equals 1 and t2 equals 1 and that will give me the Fibonacci sequence or that t, sorry, t1 equals 2 and t2 equals 1 and this will give me the Lucas sequence. So this is Fibonacci, this is Lucas. Okay, so you have to tell me which one they are in order to, like in other words, you have to tell me not just the first term, you have to tell me the first two terms, uh, which give me uh, the formula that is desired. Okay, so that's the Fibonacci sequence and the Lucas sequence. Now, of course, you can have any sequence following this rule that you want. Um, Notice that if you take these ratios of two sequential terms, 29 over 18, 18 over 11, as you go in increasing order, you still get the golden ratio. And uh, here you get the golden ratio for Fibonacci. But it's not just Fibonacci and Lucas, it's all of them. All of the sequences which follow these rules 
you can pick any two starting numbers you want and as long as you employ the same formula you will at some point come to a number that's equivalent to the golden ratio here I'm gonna I'm gonna make myself famous now and I'm gonna call this the Mr. King sequence just to illustrate just to illustrate that these rules are whatever they are I don't know maybe we can use um, negative 3 and 2. Okay, negative 3 and 2. So negative 3 and 2 make negative 1. Negative 2 and 1, ne ne sorry, 2 and negative 1 make 1. 1 and negative 1 make 0. 1 and 0 make 1. 0 and 1 make 1. 1 and 1 make 2. Oh dear, look, I got the Fibonacci sequence by accident. 1 and 2 make 3. 3 and 2 and 3 make 5. Uh-oh. I think I just I just ripped off the Fibonacci sequence without intending to, but as you can see here, um, you can get you can certainly get different numbers by starting wherever you want. How about okay? Maybe that's not the Mr. King sequence I was looking for because that sounds too much like the Fibonacci sequence. How about how about four and how about four and one? So four and one make five. One and five is six. Five and six is eleven. 6 and 11 is 17, 11 and 17 is 28, and so on. You can just keep going like that. And once again, you will get the golden ratio as you take any sequential numbers, two together. As you go further down the series, the ratio will get closer to the golden ratio. Um, so this is the Mr. King sequence. I don't think I'll be quite as famous as either Lucas or Fibonacci. Just, just as a bit of trivia, the Fibonacci numbers and the Lucas numbers um, can also have also shown up in the number of petals in a plant or the number of spirals in a pine cone and so on. They're rather remarkable. Um, I probably that's another reason why this sequence probably won't be quite as famous. But uh, people have attached a lot of mystical value to this, for example, by linking it up to things like the golden ratio. But to be honest with you, you could do it with any numbers you like and come up with the same mystical relationships that, that seem to somehow shroud in mystery. I am going to upload some videos or upload links to YouTube videos by other people who have spent a lot more time thinking about Fibonacci numbers and Lucas numbers than I have and it's really entertaining and I'm sure you will uh, like viewing them.